Hi guys, just another update of what I've been doing recently. You notice I've put about eight or nine videos up, I think, by now. Actually, by the time this one comes up, it'll probably be 11 or 12, because I've done a couple on the Esky um, French line inventory, which I've been doing. I've been doing a bit of catch up on those, actually, where I've, I only had 41 um, based on. Corks and Lucasade tops and um, oh, cheers! I do so well. <laughs> I was running out of corks, so I just had to open a, a bottle of um, a very nice prosecco, as one does in Wimbledon, you know. This is Spumanti Dal 1926. I don't think it's that old, but uh, another one little come to good use. Um, cheers. Oh, very nice. Very nice indeed. Kids are asleep or away, so uh, the evening is mine now. So yeah, I've spent a lot of today painting, doing videos. Um, one thing you may notice on some of the videos when I'm heavily into the painting and I'm making these that uh, the glasses change. So I swapped the, the very focals for the the reading glasses, and these ones are a lot lot better for focusing in on what I'm doing. So these are my uh, my Michael Caine glasses actually. Uh, so when I'm being Michael Caine, oi, get that bloody zoo off that bloody parapet now. Nah. So I'm going to Rob Brydon, mode, Steve Coogan, as I watch the trip avidly. I just love that show with all the impressions they come up with. Makes me absolutely crack up. So yeah, they're my Michael Caine classes for doing my figures. <coughs> so I shall just have a, a brief pause there and just show you how far I've got today. Okay. Okay, these are my original Airfix, the second batch of Airfix that I've got to do because there are over 50 figures in that particular set. So I've done half of them, and this is the other half that I've got to the painting of the hats and the leggings stage. Some of them have got blue jackets now, but. And of course, I've got one at the back there. Can you look in on him? The voltage. Ooh, let's just go back there. Um, so him. Now what I want to do is looking at various illustrations I have. I think I may have to paint the top of the hat yellow as well, um, because looking at the illustrations for the Esky line in front of me. the top of the hat is grey so I think it'll look quite nice actually if I paint the top of the hats tops of the hats um, I'm not trying to get these completely historically accurate by the way I'm just trying to give an impression of um, troops of the time because what I want to do is I want to do a, a campaign in the Low Countries. So imagining that, supposing Waterloo wasn't as decisive a battle as it was, supposing the Prussians had arrived later or were intercepted by the French force that was sent out to uh, delay them, interfere with them, basically stop them joining up with, with Wellington. Supposing the battle hadn't been decisive and there was a stalemate and then for the next, say, let's make it a five, ten, make it a ten year campaign, I get all my Napoleonics to fight over the low countries. So my terrain will probably reflect that, there'll be, there's lots of rivers, there's lots of bridges, there's lots of slight undulating hills, so perfect territory really. Little villages, I can do the houses, little towns, churches to, um, to fight over. And that's that's my
plan. So a low country campaign. Thought of at first doing a peninsula war one, but then I'd have to have sand and and I'm, I'm not really keen on that sort of terrain. I like lush green fields and ambling rivers and that sort of thing. So that's that's what I'm aiming for. Um, so, so I'm just panning around how far I've got with the Esky guys. I've done the legs, t the leggings today, and started on their hats as well. I've got just a little group of five left to do there because of course it was story time at this point and I was under strict disorders to get the daughter down from the loft where she'd be quite happily playing all day watching musicals while I'm busy painting so that's why those haven't been done and that's of course why I have things like my little um, pieces of paper that I told you about in a previous one about how I keep up to date with what I need to do because I keep getting interrupted so those will come in handy because I can see there's probably going to be more so I'm just taking you around a few at the front you can start to see some of the detail coming out on these guys I think these are going to be very nice figures when I finally paint it up paint them in little batches and onto the hussars so I've started the same with those because of course if I'm using black I'll paint the whole lot with the black paint. So I've started on the hats and the boots and I've got a few more uh, esky down this side as well because I'm, I'm keeping them together in the poses that they are so I can figure out what sort of bases I'm going to do with them. Uh, what roles they're going to play, for example, these guys here running with the muskets, I think, would make skirmishes. And these guys here, perhaps, as well. So the guys sort of advancing slowly with, with the rifles, I think, are going to make the voltager skirmishing part of the, the eventual detachment here. Started on the officers as well. So it's coming along quite nicely. I mean once the black's done it's a fair amount a fair proportion of the figures anyway. Most of most of these French guys are white. Or at least you know maybe fifty percent of them are white paint anyway so and then it's just doing the fiddly details of the red bits around the back. And the next thing I'll be doing is the blue of the jackets or coats for the hussars I'm going to use because they're mainly going to be blue I'm going to use these three shades so we're going to have a dark um, a mid-range and a pale one the pale and the mid-range as well I'll use for the trousers some of the trousers I may do may do in grey, but that's what I shall do for those. I know I was talking about paints in a previous one. So I have my, my larger stock of paints. Or larger paints in the large bottles, but I also have if I can zoom out, yeah. Okay, I also have this set. I think there's 24 in there, but there's a good range of colours to play with in there. Just got them from a local art shop, and you'll find these sets quite cheaply. Um, and if I just pause this, I'll tell you how much this one was. Okay, it came from WH Smith, so it would have been fairly cheap. I think 15 quid, maybe, maximum, for that. Probably cheaper than that, actually, 12 quid. So they often have these reduced. Um, so when I do spot these, then I just grab them some nice greens in there um, selection of reds as well selection of yellows so a good selection in there so you can mix them all use them as they are I like, I like mixing them some browns as well so the burnt umber the raw umber for doing horses a couple of blacks but a painless grey in there 
mask black as well. So yeah, nice little set. And that should keep me going for a long, long time. Anything that I do do a lot of, colour-wise, then I'll just buy a big tube and then I'm sorted. Okay, so that's my update today. Oh, I've been doing a little bit more on Bofa and I've also got the Grinner, the Goblin underway. These guys, I still haven't finished doing the bases yet. These were originally started off as 95th Regiment, but then I thought these are Prince August and they're, they're nice enough figures, but what I really wanted to do was get some some proper um, stuff, some proper soldiers for 95th. So I've got the Italieri 95th, which are going to look wonderful when they're painted up. So I've, I've converted these into uh, King's German Legion instead. So I just need to check what facings they need on those. I've got, I've got that written down somewhere in one of my reference books. So I'll, I'll just change these to King's German Legion instead because they wear the same sort of uniform. I've also gone out and bought, or got from Amazon, um, three boxes of these. So I've got enough French artillery. These are really nice sets. 18 figures, 31 parts. I'll just pause that again so you can just see what's inside. So you get eight horses. Uh, you get the guys who sit on the carriage, same as you get for the Waterloo, Airfix, British cavalry. Various straps there for the horses, I believe. There are only two guns in this set, which is a shame, um, but it is a nice set. I mean, that's why I decided to buy three sets of them, so you can have the mounted um, limber and one gun that's positioned. Okay, let me just pause that again. I was short of. British artillery as well. Uh, well, short of everything really. You're always short. However, often I'm caught short. But that's another story. Gonna rudge you more now for some reason. Um, so I found these were going cheap as well on Amazon. Cold Arms British Foot Artillery. I think I paid five like four fifty for this box, so I bought two. And the good thing about these is that you get four um, artillery pieces in them, which is good value. Unfortunately, you only get four um, guys for each artillery piece, but so what? You can always add another guy in there from something else. It could be, you know, a sentry or a guy, stand to arms or whatever, you, you know, the choice is yours, what you put in, but four, four is um, action poses for actually using the gun is okay. You can always put in somebody from another artillery set, as I say, but um, I'll just pause this again so we can see what's inside. So, you, I now have eight of these, everything comes in one sprue, the four guys and the gun, very simple. Um, probably explains the price as well, but it's about getting guns. So I'm all right with that. I'm quite happy with that. They're nice figures as well. Nice poses. Good detail. Um, you can read all about them on the, the Plastic Soldier Review, which is an invaluable piece of reference for everyone who's who's doing 25 mil. Um, soldiers, like the guy carrying the cannonballs there, I'm the cannonballs. He's a, he's a nice little figure. It's always the guy with the bucket. He's got a bit of a bent end on his mop. Um, or swab, whatever you call it. I do know the words for these things. You know, it's just I'm um, probably getting too old, and it's the Alzheimer's kicking in. Either that, or it's the uh, <laughs> I was very, very drunk. Um, 
the wheels are nice. Um, they're slightly bent in, which is accurate according to the Plastic Soldier Review, who seems very knowledgeable about these things. It sort of almost spoils my enjoyment of the thickest really reading the view reviews sometimes because it can be incredibly picky sometimes, you know. Um, and I just like the figures for what they are. Make your own judgment about whether you like them or not. If they look totally ridiculous, then fair enough. But they've all got their own their own value. Even the the Airfix American Civil War ones and the Ameri and the uh, French Foreign Legion are, are absolutely awful figures, but um, they've got sort of they've got a, a memory of for me of having them when I was a child in the seventies. So they, they still have a value to me, but they are awful figures. I'd still get them though. Okay, so I bought a few other things, but I shall put those on the next video. Um, so I shall be keeping you up to date with how I'm going on these. Not every shade that I've put on, but it's nice to see them coming on and starting to take shape piece by piece. There's an awful lot of figures here, you know. But I'm banging on with it. Okay, so take care guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.